Well, welcome to Fight Week. It's a little different having media down Thursday. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, I had a really good weight cut this fight camp. Um, came in nice and light. My energy system's really high, so I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling great. And you know, it's my first co-main event, so I'm just looking to perform. Does it feel a little different it being a co-main event, or is it just like any other fight week? Um, as of right now, it just feels like any other fight week. But I do understand the magnitude of this fight and this opportunity, so I'm taking it very seriously and making sure I'm I'm seizing the opportunity. And what is the magnitude? Can you tell me what this fight means to you? You know, this is a big fight against a big name, against a legend that everybody knows. So I think if I make a big statement and, and get to finish this fight, it's going to put me right back up in the ranking systems and I can go back on my run and, and really, you know, trying to be the champion that I know I can become. What did you think when they came came to you and said Cub Swanson? What were your first thoughts? It, it, was, a, it was a great matchup. You know, my, my manager... You know, he didn't even really ask me. He's like, yo, I got you this fight, and I know you're, you're going to want it. So as soon as he said it, I was, you know, very excited, and I think it's, it's a great fight, and I was, uh, you know, very thankful that I got this opportunity, and uh, I'm just happy, and I think the fans are going to be happy for this matchup as well. What sort of fight are you expecting from him? I'm expecting an explosive fight. I know Cub Swanson likes to throw bombs. I like to throw bombs as well. I don't think he's going to be running from me, so I think it's going to be one of those fights where I'm going to be able to display my skills and not be having to run and chase somebody down. Can you tell me about your shirt? Who is that on your shirt, and who do they, what do they mean to you? Um, yeah, you know, we had a close, close friend of ours in Edmonton. Uh, had a tragic ending, unfortunately, uh, you know, due to gun violence, so it was... It was quite sad. It hit, hit the city quite hard, and uh, this literally just happened, you know, a couple weeks ago. And uh, you know, his dad made the shirt for me, and uh, he was only 23 years old, and uh, it, it was it's just really tragic. Is that difficult for you to have a fight week so close to something like that that happens in your life? You know, yes, you know, but just unfortunately, just you know, kind of the people I kind of grew up with, it, it, it's happened a lot of fights, you know, it, it's, it's been happening. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate and it's sad and I just you know, want to make sure I keep his memory going. Thank you. What sort of legacy are you looking to hope to, if not already accomplished, what is the clear message that you would like the world to know about who you are as a man and a professional fighter? You know, I want the world to know I'm a humble man. Um, I'm a good person, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm a fierce striker. I'm, a, I'm one of the best fighters in the world. I have what it takes to become world champion and one of the greatest of all time. Thank you. Keep over here. It's almost been a year since you last fought against Julian Arosa. What's the biggest takeaway from that fight that'll help you get your hand raised on Saturday against Cub Swanson? Uh, I think, you know, the biggest takeaway that I took from that fight is, uh, like I said, this fight camp, I made sure I came in with my nutrition on point. I made sure that the weight cut wasn't going to be an issue. And that way, I'm not going to be so drained and I can just focus on my energy on the fight. I'm, you know, I came in very light. My energy system, as you can see, is really high. So I think uh, just, you know, really paying attention to my nutrition and weight was, uh, you know, a big wake up for me. Right here. What do you think the current state of Canadian MMA is right now, bro? Because we had that card in Vancouver, and, I mean, the fans went off, the fighters went off, we went undefeated that night. So where do you think we are in MMA right now? I think Canadian MMA is blowing up. You know, we got uh, Mike Malott. He's getting a lot of attention right now. We, we fought way back in the day. Um, we got uh, Jordan from Quebec, um, Gavin Tucker, um, Tanner Booser, you know, we, we got it. We got my boy Chad and Hallinger. So we got a great scene and I think it's only going to get bigger. So I'm just looking to uh, contribute to this on my first co-main event and just keep blowing up the Canadian scene. And I want to be kind of seen as like the captain, team captain of Canada. You know what I mean? Is that on the bucket list for the UFC career to get a fight in Canada? Yeah, I'd love to fight back in Canada. You know, I fought UFC Calgary and Edmonton and Toronto, so I fought in, in Canada a couple of times, but I'd love to, to bring it back. 
And then what do you think of the current state of the 145 pound division, right? Because we got the champ that's talking about moving up. You got Sapuria that wants to fight the champ. Like, what do you think about these guys jumping divisions? Like, do you think there should be a, you know, a, a champion that just stays and fights in the division? You know, I can't hate on anyone trying to trying to be double champ, you know what I mean? Because if I had the belt and I defended a couple times, I'd want to do the same thing. So, you know, hats off to Alex Volganotsky. But, you know, when I get there, I hope he's still champ so I can, you know, test my skills against him.